Welcome, everybody. This is Games Over Plastic, episode 11. For real this time, it's actually episode 11. I am Midnight. As always, I am joined by my two amazing co-hosts. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the master weeb, master of JRPGs, and the lord of summer, the man who's living his best life right now, Sean Mason. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm enjoying my uh, summer vacation so far. It's like week two of uh, summer break and I'm loving it. Peak gaming time. I've played a lot of games over the last two weeks and, you know, just been loving life. Loving it. Heck Going yeah. to a Red Sox game today, actually. Ooh, nice. Who are yeah. they playing? Yeah. The Padres, which is funny because when I went to the Mets game a few weeks ago with Lord Cognito and Lord Sov and Astro Pirate King, they played the Padres then too, so... Second time in two weeks I've seen the Padres play. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, shout out to Lord Cognito. He was on the show last week, which was awesome, or two weeks ago. And also shout out to Sav and Astro, friends of the show. Awesome people. All right. And of course, last but not least, we have the man who's down here in Texas crawling around in your attic, but with permission, though, with consent. He's sweating. <laughs> But he's doing God's work, keeping everybody cool. Hodge, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Happy it's the weekend. I'm always happy when it's the weekend because, yeah, I'm not sweating my ass off in an attic. So uh, <laughs> excited to be here. Excited to talk about some games that will be coming out this year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, in today's episode, that is what our topic is going to be. We are going to be going over our five most anticipated games that are coming in the second half of 2024. So five each, 15 amazing games we're going to be going over. So look forward to that. Let's get into some administrative stuff. This is Games Over Plastic, as I always say, the podcast for the agnostic gamers, real gamers, no console wars. Just fun. You can find us on YouTube with video glory, beautiful graphics and cameras. And, you know, every now and then you might even see some leg or something. You never know. We're at YouTube.com slash at Games Over Plastic. We're also on audio podcast services everywhere. So that would be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Everycast. If you're on an audio service right now, check the description. There is a link to the video version if you want to see said cameras and graphics all right please leave us a like and a subscription if you're on youtube thank you guys for subscribing by the way we have jumped up um we gained like 15 subscribers recently so that's awesome we're, we're moving on up maybe we might hit 100 subs sometime soon so keep on subbing we really appreciate you and your support um and yeah that's pretty much it i guess uh, it comes every other week on mondays you know the drill so let's go ahead and get into some video games, shall we? Let's go ahead and start off with what we are playing. And I suppose I'll start it off this week because that's what it says on the show notes. So I am playing two games, guys, two games. So one I talked about last week, last episode, I beat it. Assassin's Creed Unity and the DLC, the Dead Kings DLC. So I beat this. Uh, when I mentioned this before, I talked about how much I was enjoying the game. It was so cool. I love the settings. It's running at 60 frames on the Series X with that wonderful uh, FPS boost with the backwards compatibility. You love to see that. Um, I got to say, though, I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. It felt a little bit rushed. Um, the game's a little short. Uh, the ending just wasn't super awesome, in my opinion. Um, the DLC was pretty good. Overall, though, I did enjoy it, and I have no complaints. I'm glad I played it. Um, it was looking like it might have been like a 9 out of 10, but it, it kind of settled around the 7.5 range for me, I think. Um, just because something in particular happened at the ending that I'm not going to spoil that I wasn't a fan of. So, um, and the runtime. Um, have you, either of you guys played this? I don't even remember. I don't think so. Never played Assassin's Creed. Probably never will, unless... Shadows is a game that would probably make me play it. Yeah, play Shadows. Just because of the setting. And but it's an I RPG. I, oh, yeah. I mean, everything's RPG now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have not played Unity. It was the one that came out and it was busted when it launched. So I just kind of looked away from it. I never bothered going back to it. Uh, I've always heard it was, you know, good once it got updated and everything. But, ow. Pinch my finger. Um, but 
Yeah, it was I it was also kind of at that point where Assassin's Creed was being an annual title and it just it got so stale because of that. And Unity was one I, I remember I was excited for when it was announced because I was like four player co-op as Assassin sounds awesome. That's like just going around murking guards as a team. That'd be so much fun. But yeah, it just came out busted. So I never bothered with it. And uh, at that point. Uh, like you know ford come out and they had kind of rebranded with origins by the time i was thinking and uh, once it once it rebranded with origins it was kind of hard to go back to those older games that had the old format because they were kind of just samey and it was outdated at that time so because i also I, I remember i bought syndicate i never played it because i just i just got it was one of those like cheap black friday purchases they're like oh i'll get to it eventually and then you just never do. And then it feels like the time has kind of passed where you're like, I don't really want to play this. So, so it's just, it, it's just kind of a series I fell off of. I loved origins. I liked Odyssey, but fell off because I got the open world fatigue. And then I heard Valhalla was even longer than both of them. So I was like, I don't want to put that time into it. And so I've just kind of fallen off of the assassins. I, I kind of, I'm interested in shadows, but it's, it'll probably be a, the typical Ubisoft three months later, it's twenty dollars kind of purchase. But was uh, was Unity the one that launched and they had like the all the models were all screwed up? Like the it was eyeballs and floating stuff. teeth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a yeah. nightmare. Okay, because I, I, I that's my experience with Assassin's Creed. Just, it, whoa, exactly. Whoa, 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 <laughs> looking at all those pictures of me, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I thought the NBA 2K face scan was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. It was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played an NBA 2K game, but I do remember the memes of just like the, the Dude, monstrosities of the facial scan models. The, the first year they had the facial scan, I spent hours trying to scan my face because you would get like you get it uploaded and then there'd be like an arrow and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to do it again. And you'd be like, or they'd be like, turn your head at a 30 degree angle, slightly, slightly. It's so much easier now to do it, but like when it first happened, oh my gosh. I remember that. Hours. <laughs> Wasted a whole night doing that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. It was nightmare fuel with some of those uh, scans that came through. Uh, I just wanted to say mm-hmm. that uh, somewhere out there, Seahawk, our friend, is out there listening to this podcast, and he's hearing Hodge say going back to the old games is pointless because the formula is all the same. And he's he's yelling in his car right now. He's mad. He loves <laughs> he loves those old games. He's not a fan of the RPG I, ones. Well, that's the thing. I liked the old ones. They just got so samey. That's why Black Flag yeah. felt like. Was such a refresh, even though it was still that old format, Black Flag had that open seas pirate kind of. It was like, and it just didn't take itself as seriously. You were just like a fun pirate, like it wasn't the uh, the Desmond like the world is ending if we don't get what? this done kind of thing. It was it was a lot more lighthearted and fun, and that's why four honestly it might be my favorite Assassin's Creed of all time. It was it was a blast, but just playing those other ones that are just kind of forgotten. Like once they got away from Des, once they got away from the Desmond plot they're very hit or miss on if they were even interesting. Like I'm sure the gameplay was fun, but like the plots and everything, I was like, I don't want to play as F Sturgill employee number 12. Who's just scanning into random memories and stuff. Like yeah. it just, it, it just didn't hit the same. Um, but I, I did love orange. I, I mean, to me, I don't think the, the formula changed as drastically as people make it seem like they make it seem like it went from open world sandbox to um, like open world RP, like just amazing RPG. It's like, it's still basically the same game. They just changed a couple things. It's not, it's not stand in a crowd of people and blend in kind of shit anymore, but I yeah. don't know. Assassin's Creed's a good, it's a good series. It's just one I kind of got bored of and fell off. Hodge, what, what it's screaming to me is that since you liked Black Flag so much, you should just play Skull and Bones. Dude, so I, I, I know I said like it had the ship stuff and open. See, I, the ship combat I thought sucked. Like I, I, I like, I liked sailing. Or, oh, I fucking hated it. I remember when it got introduced in Assassin's Creed Three. I was like, oh, this is terrible. And then Four came out, and I was like, it's even more. I'm like, oh fuck. I just like the setting of being in like the Caribbean, like sailing around like that. I but the ship combat itself sucks. So when they're like, hey, we're making a game that's dedicated to the part you hate most about Assassin's Creed, I'm like, I'm never going to play that game. I will, <laughs> I will never play Skull and Bones. I'd rather play Sea of Thieves, which is a fun game. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I actually I enjoyed the ship combat in Odyssey 
more than black flag it was simplified like you were just sailing around shooting like arrows and fire arrows and ramming into people mm. and then boarding them and killing them like I, I that was fun um and i've said before i just absolutely love that greek island setting it was just so it was just beautiful you know the turquoise water the white sand beaches yeah. the big statue of poseidon it was just epic um, yeah, it was it was a it was a beautiful setting. It's just I was I, it was one of those it was like the same of how oh, I fell off Horizon Horizon Forbidden West. I just had open world fatigue at the time, and okay. I just I was like I'll come back to it eventually. So Odyssey and Forbidden West are two games I'll go back to eventually. But yeah, it's just one of those things where you start a game, you're like I'm not feeling it right now, and you just kind of put it down until another time. All right, let's keep it moving here. That was seven minutes on Assassin's Creed. But yeah, Assassin's Creed Unity, good game. I enjoyed it. And I will say real quick right before we move on that unfortunately because I played it in 2024, I didn't get to experience the co-op. I tried, but surprisingly, mm. nobody was queuing up for co-op. Can you believe it? I couldn't find yeah. any partners. So, and that's Can sad. you do like a custom like local uh, or not local like you know, local co-op, but uh, can you do like private, a private, party, like a private, yeah, private yeah. party to do it? Like um, if you had, maybe, I don't know. Okay. I didn't have any, I don't know if like plan. if three people signed on and played all, so you could have a group do it or not, but uh, maybe, well, if you all searched at the same time, it would presumably maybe put you together. Oh, you know. can't even make a private party to, I don't, do I don't it. know. I was playing alone. So, oh, okay. Um, gotcha. Would have to look that up and experiment, but mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was Assassin's Creed Unity. The last game that I'm playing, I also mentioned this before, I'm still playing Diablo 4. I'm playing through that right now, having a good time. I'm playing as my necromancer. Uh, This is my first time ever playing the game, so I'm just playing through the campaign and the story, doing a lot of the side quests too. The story's pretty good. Um, I'm enjoying the game. I'm not... I'm not, like, head over heels enjoying the game um, because it's not, like, a full-on, like super rpg where you actually have like choices and dialogue and stuff you know that's the stuff that really hooks me uh it's pretty much just a set narrative that you're experiencing but it's good though i mean i'm having fun for what it is um i'm definitely going to beat the game and i'm enjoying it so that is it diablo 4 for me um so any any thoughts on diablo 4 real quick and then we'll pass it over to you hodge for what you're playing is the story as shallow in the diablo games as people make them out to be because people make it out to be like it is so shallow, the story. Like, it's all about just playing the game and the combat. Like, people, a lot of people have, like, no idea what's going on. No, I, I wouldn't say that it's that shallow. Um, I mean, there's a there's been, like, so far there's been, like, 15 to 20 missions that I've done. We're, like, hunting down a big bad and trying to stop them and, you know, saving a couple people. So, I don't think it's that shallow. It's not, like, crazy deep or anything, but it's not, like, uh, it's not super shallow either. So far, it's a decent story. Um, once I beat the game, though... I'll be able to better answer that because I'm still in it. I'm in Act 3. Um, I think there's four acts. I, I'm not sure, though. Um, but, yeah, it's not bad. All right. I'm just curious, yeah. All right. Um, Hodge, any thoughts on Diablo? And then get into what you're playing, sir, because you are up next. Yeah. Um. No, my brothers have been trying to get me to play it, but it just, it's just – it's just one of those like the top down gameplay. It's I my brothers also played the OG Warcrafts back in the day, like even before World of Warcraft and stuff like that. So they always they've always been into those and they've always tried getting me new, but it's just never appealed. I'm sure they're fun, but it's it's just one of those game mo- game styles where I'm just like, eh, it's just I'd rather play other stuff. I don't I don't need to force myself to try and like something that hasn't appealed to me but yeah it, i mean i i've heard people love it so I, it's cool but yeah it's just really not my not my thing but uh for me my games uh the first one i just wanted to hop into super quick because i don't like uh, so it's Fortnite reload uh i don't obviously don't like talking about Fortnite every freaking week you know i've been you know playing it but there's this new game mode that just came out called reload where it's a small it's i think it's um People were saying it's a ripoff of, I think it's called like Rebirth Island or something in Call of Duty, um, where it's like a, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically a game mode where instead of it being 100 people and you have to be the last one standing, it's 40 people on a smaller island and has landmarks from the original map, the weapons from the original map, which is, you know, the nostalgia that everyone has for Fortnite if you've been playing it for, you know, since the beginning. And uh, it's 40 people on a smaller map. And if you die, you can choose to kill. Like when you get down, you can choose to kill yourself and respawn. And so basically when you're fighting and you get down, you just let yourself die. And then you're in squads. It takes 30 seconds to respawn in duos. It takes 
eight seconds, I believe, six or eight seconds to respond. So you just kind of make that strategic choice of do I let myself respond at full health in 30 seconds and see if they can survive or do I stay down, let them come heal me and try and do And so it's cool. And then once it gets to like a certain point in the game, the, the automatic reboots just go away. So you have to survive the rest of the game. And it's just a really fun game mode with the old OG Fortnite kind of uh vibes with it and so i've been having a lot of fun with that it's kind of reinvigorated since like i talked about i think two weeks ago when we talked about our games we we're playing they talk uh or maybe it was four weeks i don't remember but uh how it's like kind of turned into car combat in the main battle royale yeah. right now with the with the theme and it's just it's just kind of sucks and so um, it's been nice going to reload where it's all the old stuff that i remember and love about Fortnite, and just kind of play this really fun, fun game mode that goes way quicker and so it's a lot of fun but um, I know you guys have nothing to say about Fortnite, so I got one thing. I got one thing to say. Oh, okay, okay. Thing. It's it's crazy to me that you're all, we're already in a point where people are nostalgic for OG Fortnite. Like, I know, <laughs> like it was like Twisted Towers or what is that? What it's called? Twisted Towers or Leaky, uh, Leaky Tilted Lake? Tilted Towers. Is that one? Tilted Towers at Leaky Lake. Lake. Is that one of them? Loot, Loot Lake. Lake. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. This is crazy. I can't believe it's been around and people are still playing this game. I, I mean, it's that like, effect. It's I just it's hate game. that game. Game it's, sucks. it's a it's a game that i mean it, you can have the nostalgia because it's an ever-evolving game like i just saw today uh our buddy Corey posted in uh discord that hell divers has lost 90 percent of its player base including me i had i don't play it anymore because but it's because it's stale like i earned the platinum which was awesome i was grinded for that i earned all the stratagems and shit modules all the stuff you unlock as you play and they cap you at certain uh like if you you search for materials and you cap at like 500 for the common ones and stuff like that and so i maxed out on everything i've unlocked everything i have all the i have the plat they haven't added anything it's just different planets sometimes you defend different planets it's different environments but you're still doing the same missions the same two enemy types and so it's just gotten a little stale and people fall off of it because you're not earning anything anymore and that's what a a good live service keeps you in thing and so what i was the long story short uh is Fortnite is constantly evolving so it's cool that we have nostalgia for the old map even though it's only six years old because it's grown so much to this new game that keeps people engaged that when they do bring back that OG shit, you're like, Oh my God, I forgot about this weapon. I forgot about this Island. I loved it landing here. Like it's this really fun thing. And it was also when it was, I, it was my favorite time to play Fortnite back in that day. But so it's obviously that nostalgia also, but yeah, it's just really cool that a game can keep evolving so much that six years later, it's still going strong with millions of people playing it because they're just ever evolving it. It's really, so I, I just love that about it. But um yeah so it is kind of funny that i have the nostalgia but i like that they evolve it like that but uh it's, my next also, game... one more thing hang on, oh, yeah. hang on one more thing yeah, it's yeah. also funny that we've come to the point where we need games like as much as even though like we're from that era where we used to you know we play games for fun we don't need to we don't need to be earning stuff mm-hmm. it's come to that point where like people are like no we need to earn stuff so we're going to the games well, that give us new stuff yeah, I mean, but it's also it's I I agree, but that I because I wouldn't want that in a game like I don't know it, I, they don't need to make Alan Wake two a live service game. Just it's, it's no, a, I understand what you're saying. I'm talking yeah. about multiplayer though. And yeah, it's just funny that we yeah. we come from that era where you know oh we play the game for fun. Like we don't need to just be real costly rewarded with these battle pass and new skins and all that and all this yeah. stuff. But like it's just funny that we it, it, everyone we all evolve. Everyone evolves. Yeah, I think that there's two there's two aspects that that I can kind of think of is uh, when we were kids, we had the games that we had, and you had to pay, you had to buy them. So you bought that game, and you were stuck in that game. Like I, I the days of Halo Three, everything was unlockable in game, and but once you got the skin, you're still playing just because it was fun. Same with Call of Duty. Uh, battle passes are cool, but it's it's obviously just a thing to incentivize you to stay. Whereas games just used to be fun and that incentivize you to stay. But nowadays the other thing is these games are free. So if it doesn't have something to keep you, people are like, well, I'm just going to go to the next free game. Yeah. Like, so it's like my, the next game I'm going to talk about. It's just, just a game that was free. I downloaded it. I loved it for a while. And then I fell off of it, which is my next game is X defiant. Uh, after you talked about it, I really wanted to try it. When you said it was old school call of duty vibes. I'm like, I have to yep. play this. So, and it, and it was, what do you think? It was, what do you think old, of it? it was old school call of duty vibes. I really loved it until me and my buddies got out of the welcome uh, playlist 
and just started playing the normal game mode. And it was the sweatiest game I have played in a long time. It that is. was at the point where I was going like five and 30 in games. I'm just getting my ass kicked. And like, and my cousin, who's a very, very, very good first person shooter, he's going like 500 and he's getting pissed off because he's usually the guy who goes a 3 0 KD, at, you know, 2 0, 3 0, 4 0 KD. And so he's getting his, he's, he's finishing 500 and he's like, what is going on? Like, and we're just playing against the ultimate sweats. These people, you know, they're suddenly, we're playing against PC people, obviously. And so they have a sniper, which is a one shot kill. And you're just, so the second you go in the open, you're just dead. And I'm just like, this isn't fun. I don't find this fun anymore because it was, it was fun when, if I finished, you know, 500, it's like, all right, I had a decent match. I killed people as much as they killed me fun. But when I'm going minus 50, I'm like, what is this isn't fun to me anymore. So I just, I mean, it's also a skill issue. Get good. I, I get that, but it just, I just fell off and I'm just like, I, it was fun for the week and a half. We played it until we got kicked out of the welcome menu and just went into the sweat menu, but, or playlist, but I'm just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore, but it was awesome. Old school call of duty vibes. And I did have a lot of fun with it when I wasn't getting my ass kicked. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny with X Defiant because I'm also playing that. I didn't put it on my list because I'd already talked about it. It's just like it's a mm-hmm. live service, so I feel like I don't need to talk about these every week. Like, but I am playing it still. Um, I play it with um, with my with a friend of mine, Dob. Um, he was on one, my one v one Call of Duty. Call. So I'm a uh, so like I, we're good players. I'm a two KD player in Call of Duty. He's like a four KD player. Um, so we're partied up and we're playing and we're doing pretty good. Um, we're winning the majority of our games, but it is very sweaty um it is very sweaty you are absolutely right um we're usually doing pretty good and we're usually going positive but there are games where i'll go negative like i'll go like like i think like the worst game i had i think i went probably like 13 and like 27 or something like it which for me is really bad Um, but there's also really good games where i'll get like 38 kills and only like nine deaths or something so there's a huge variance of the games but it is super sweaty there are games where we get stomped out like there are games where we get absolutely destroyed like we can barely get out of our spawn because you play against like a full team and they just got the map locked down and Mm -hmm. they're on the head glitches and stuff and like you're getting they're flanking you and you're getting shot in the back so that can be very stressful um so i do agree with you it is very very sweaty um but one thing i will mention is that with season one uh, which is coming soon. Um, they actually have a ranked playlist. And I know when you hear ranked, you probably think that's going to be sweaty, right? But the thing about the ranked is it has skill based matchmaking. So if you go in there, you actually will probably be getting matched up against people that are like around your wavelength. Um, and you'll probably have a lot more fun. It's also 4v4, which I kind of like. I feel like these maps play well. 4v4, we played a couple games. We didn't play a lot. We played mm-hmm. a couple. And like, they they felt pretty good for before like it wasn't too crowded you weren't getting shot in the back all the time but you were able to just get out there and shoot people and have fun so the rank playlist might be something that you enjoy because it will have skill based um yeah so that could be cool but we'll see when season one comes out but anyways that's x defiant i'm playing it i'm enjoying it but i absolutely agree with you it is a sweaty mother effing game dude because mm-hmm. e- like even us we're really good players especially him we get stomped out on there sometimes <laughs> like you play some teams and it's rough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, I don't know if you had anything to say about it, no. Sean or not. Or I can oh. move on. Okay. Uh, then the last game I played is uh game pass release game. Uh, Still wakes the deep. Um, I, it's not the best walking sim I've ever played, but it was very good. And the graphics were gorgeous. It was it was very photorealistic at times, but I didn't know it was going to be as much of a horror game as it was actually because the trailers just kind of were like you're walking around. So if anyone who doesn't know, you're basically a guy who's working on an oil rig and they drill into something like they're like, oh, you like there's a moment where you're up talking to your boss and he gets a phone call. And they're like, oh, the drill stuck. We can't keep going. And he goes, I don't. They're all Scottish or whatever. So like, I don't care. Keep drilling. And so they, and then all of a sudden there's just a huge explosion and, you know, the oil rigs kind of starts falling apart. Like what the hell's going on? And it turns out that they hit like this alien kind of thing. And it just like sprouts up through the oil rig and just starts taking over people. And so basically the whole game is you're just trying to avoid these like creatures that are killing everyone. And it's this very cool, 
like it is just a walking sim because really all you do is you walk around and you interact with stuff. So it is like they're very and they're actually it's funny they're I uh they got the achievement it's the achievement is called walking simulator and it's don't sprint for more than ten minutes during your entire playthrough and so, so I got I got the walking sim achievement and uh but it was a very very good story which is what the the point of walking sims are obviously you're not playing that for gameplay you literally walk swim open doors interact with stuff like that's literally all it is but it's this amazing story because it's also this guy he's like going through a divorce and like so it's this really emotional story and i really enjoyed it and it was like graphically gorgeous like i said like it doesn't live up to what remains of edith finch or gone home or call of the sea like these other walking sims that I, I absolutely adore but it is a very good one it's about a five six hour game if anyone wants to check it out in game fast if you do like the story based walking sims it's definitely i think it's definitely worth checking out for anyone interested in that all right good stuff i don't have anything to say about still wakes the deep it looks cool it's on game pass so that's cool um, mm -hmm. So let me go. I'll pass it over to Sean. Uh, Sean, if you, I, I if think you... that I just want to say, well, I think the setting of that is so fascinating. Like mm -hmm. being like trapped on this, like a like a, an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Like to me, that is so, even that without the supernatural elements, like you had said, like that's terrifying to me. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot creeper than I expected it to be, but it was awesome. And then people should play it for sure. Especially if you have Game Pass. Best yeah. Game. Gaming. Game Pass is awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, Sean, if you had any thoughts on Still Wakes and then go ahead and get into your games. But yeah, go ahead and uh, hit us with what you're playing or talk about whatever you want, sir. All right. So I wasn't on the last main episode. So it's been about like almost like almost a, almost a month, about about four weeks. You know, I was on all the I've been on like two supplemental shows, two DLC episodes and not a main episode. Um, but in the meantime, the day we recorded our last main episode, so four weeks ago, I got the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Platinum. Like, I got the wow. Platinum that day. So that was pretty cool. I just wanted to mention that. I don't, I don't need to say anything more about that. So then I was like, well, I'm going to be playing a game that I will be talking about in a little bit. But I only had like a week to figure it out. So I decided to play Animal Well on PS5. It was on PS Plus. So I decided, That's that donkey you know, one, me, right? Yeah. Let me figure this out. Let me, uh, let me check this game out. Really interesting puzzle game. Um, some very obscure answers. I don't think any of them were too like, oh my gosh, I'm banging my head against the wall like trying to figure this out. Um, I ended up, I ended up getting the platinum. It took me about ten hours to get the platinum. Um, That's not bad. But yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Like not not bad at all. Um, some of the solutions, like I said, were not as. Um, not as difficult as others, but as I went on, I got into I got into the game a little bit more. Like at first, I was like, "Yeah, this game's kind of all right." There's not really like a main. There's not like a story to it. It's kind of like you're just in a well, and there's like animals in the well, and you're trying to like figure. You're trying to like just go around and trying to get out of the well, basically. But there's like little. It's kind of like a Metroidvania light because like you go to certain areas and you come back and you have to like find certain items to use to um you find certain items to use to help you like navigate through the area. And then there's obviously there's optional challenges. Like you can find these eggs. There's like, I think there's 64 of them. I can't remember if there's 64. I don't know. There's like 64 eggs you find. And like that, that helps you. If you find all 64, you get the true ending. Um, there's at one point this giant demon cat kind of like chases you around. <laughs> it's like really weird. And like it chases you around like, and it's part of a puzzle. And like to figure that out, that took me a while to figure out like what I needed to do. Um, I got really, like, I beat the game without looking anything up regularly, and then I found, like, I think it was, like, 55 eggs without looking anything up, and then I was, like, I have to figure, like, I, I can't, like, I'm, I, I have no idea what else to do. So, um, and I was so close already that I decided to look it up. Um, it's pretty cool. Art style is very, like, unique, very old looking. Like, if you, if I showed it to a student, they'd think it probably came out in the 80s. Um... <laughs> But it, it, it does a lot. It, it, it's really cool. I, I'm glad that he, you know, it's Dunkey's game. I'm glad that he got to, you know, put this out there. I'm, I'm excited to see what he does next. Uh, any any thoughts on Animal Well? I No, I, I'm not familiar with this game. I haven't played it, but, um, or I haven't even heard of it. But that sounds, sounds interesting. I'm glad you got another plat. So that's two plats for you. Yeah. And uh, I, shout out to the Bubble Wand. The Bubble Wand. That's my favorite, favorite, uh little item you got you blow bubbles you can jump on the bubbles 
Yeah, all I have to really say about it is it. I I just like that it's an indie game, like a true indie game of someone put their own money towards it and just was like, I want to make good games because that's kind of what a lot of gaming is suffer uh, missing right now. I mean, there's a lot of indie games, obviously, but like having people who make the games for the passion of the game rather than making like kind of a corporate like deadline kind of game. It's yeah. just it's very cool that a game like that is like in talks of game of the year already. Like it's the fact that people are loving it that much is just really cool. But yeah, it's not a game I've played and I would like to like to play it one day, but it's just not at the top of my radar right now, but I'm happy people are loving it for sure. Cause that's, that's just really cool when games like that succeed. All right, next up I am playing SMT five vengeance. So this is a game that I had like a, like a week and a half like buffer. So that's why I played animal. Well, so if I, if this, if I didn't have that buffer, I probably wouldn't even play animal. Well, which I'm glad I did, but SMT five vengeance. Now this is a re-release of, um, SMT five, which came out originally on switch back in December of 2021. So it was like at a weird, like releasing a new game. And it was literally like a week before Christmas. So even like weirder, not even like the first week of December, but like right before Christmas. So, um, I eventually did play it on switch. Um, not right away. Um, I played it probably a year later uh, and I liked it. Wasn't my favorite Atlas game now, th- but what vengeance does, it adds a lot of quality of life features. Um, like there's some new quests they add, but some quality of life is with like traversal. They add these like things called like grind rails. So you can easily get across the map. So you find like a little like waypoint. And if you click, if you like click the waypoint, it will grind. You'll like literally get on like a rail and grind across and go to another waypoint. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they added some extra demons too. So um, it's, it's very similar to Persona. Like instead of Personas, you're getting demons. And to get demons on your team, you have to recruit them by talking to them. The conversations are quite funny. Some of them, like they'll ask you a question. It'll be like, I smell blood. Can you smell it? And like, you have like three options to choose from. And like, depending on what you choose, the demon, you have no idea how the demon's going to react. Like you could choose, oh yeah, it smells great. And it'd be like, ew, you, you, ew, you can smell blood, but you're a human. How can you smell it? Um, stuff like that. Um, it's pretty humorous. Uh, one thing that I do not like about the game is that the demons level up so quickly that uh, once you level them up to a certain point, they, they, anytime they level up after that, like they don't grow in like, like they don't learn any new skills and it's harder for them to grow. Like their level capped pretty quick. So you're cycling through demons a lot. So like, it's really hard to get attached to one because mm-hmm. you're like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, end up ditching you anyway, but overall it's cool. Um, it's much more similar to soul hackers than persona and that there's no romancing. Like you have optional side conversations with characters. Like there are some other humans. There's only a select few other humans, like four or five. Um, but most of it is talking to your demons and you really, like I said, you're cycling through the demons so much. It's really hard to get attached to them. Um, but the combat's great. It's classic persona style combat. Um, it's very diff- It's a lot more difficult than persona. Um, like you have, like you definitely have to use your buffs and your, um, debuffs on enemies or you're going to get your butt kicked. Um, I'm about three quarters of the way through the new playthrough, according to like on P on PlayStation, they have that little thing like yeah. percentage that shows I'm like at 76% right now. And I've played about 35 hours. So, so far I'm liking it. I don't know if I'm going to go, go for the plat. You have to play it like six times. And I, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, I might eventually, but Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, I have all the time in the world right now. Um, it's true, but, um, SMT five, I, I, if you like, atlas i would suggest it but if you're like only like atlas because of like the like the the character development and the romancing and you're like yeah i I don't really care about the combat or like anything like that then i this game isn't for you but yeah any questions about smt5 vengeance you know it's funny um you know shout out to my friend dob that i was just talking about he's as casual of a gamer as you get i mean he's he's the call of duty he's the 2k He's the, uh, you know, the Madden type gamer, right? He just plays those those tent pool live service games. But I actually saw the other day he was playing Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance. And I was like, this is weird because he doesn't play a lot of RPGs and stuff like that. So I was like, hey, man, how you like it? He's like, it's cool, man. It's good. He's like, it's hard, but I like it. So, uh, you know, that's cool. Uh, this is a game that, like I've said, I do want to play. Um, but it's another it's just one of those things where there's just too many damn games and I don't have enough time. 
Um, my backlog is is literally like 50, 45, 50 games right now. So, um, Hodge, I know this is definitely not something that you've played or care about, really. No, I, I didn't know it was like a Persona or I didn't know it was an Atlas game until I saw like a trailer for this one a long time ago. And I was like, oh, it's those same people. And that's really all I thought yeah. about it. <laughs> like literally the demons, like literally the demons are the same exact thing as Personas. They're just yeah. called demons. Mm, yeah. It's like c- copy for co- like same names, same name. Like if you look it up, if you look up like a demon name, you'll get like sometimes like Persona Wiki will come up instead of like SMT Wiki. I'm like, all right. Um, to be fair oh, one though. More thing that- oh, I was going to say, to It'll be, be fair on. though, it is a spinoff. Um, Persona was a spinoff of Shin Megami Tensei, yeah. so they're in the same universe. So it's not like they're just like blatantly copying each other. Uh, no, it, it's the I, same. I mean, obviously, oh, I'm, yeah. ta- I'm talking to the audience. I know you know, Sean. Yeah. Um, no, but one thing that is pretty cool is um, the whole the whole game takes place in Tokyo, and like it's like a almost like an alternate realm where you're going through, and like it's like the future, but it's all like post apocalyptic. Like you start out in like this like desert there's just sand everywhere you're supposed to be in tokyo and it's covered in sand and then you get to go to akihabara and it's just taken over by demons and it's all run down it's pretty cool and like there's this one guy who you buy and sell items to and he's obsessed with like like old time like um relics so like you'll sell him like it'll be like an ancient video game system it's supposed to be like it's referencing like an an nes if you read the description so that's kind of cool um but yeah i'm enjoying it that is cool and then very rarely, I am playing a second JRPG, and that is Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'm so excited um, to hear what you think about this. I love Fire Emblem. Let's yeah. hear it. So I'm playing. I'm playing this exclusively on the Switch. So basically, this is um well, obviously exclusively. It's only on the Switch. I meant in handheld mode. I'm playing exclusively handheld mode. So this is like my handheld game. So anytime I'm like out by the pool, when I get out of the pool, if I'm just like laying down. I'll just be, you know, playing on my Switch. I'm about 25 hours into it, so I've played a lot of it. And you know what? This I'm not a tactics guy, but you know, I'm this combat's got me. This combat's got me hooked, like to the point where I'm doing all the optional, like making it more difficult for myself, doing all the challenges. Like I'm really invested in the characters. Like I'm playing with permadeath, so like if a character dies, I'm like, oh my gosh. But I'm not resetting. Like it's not how you play. You don't reset. Whatever happens, happens. Um, I'm part of. Um, so, uh, yeah, sorry, got a little, con- sorry, we can edit this out. You're, um, you're fine. You're fine. It's professional podcasting. Let's go roll with it. Um, so there are three houses you get put in, um, and you can choose from the, um, blue lions, the golden deer, and I can't remember what the last one's called. Cause I'm not part of that one. Blue lions, golden deer. It doesn't matter. The third one. Yeah. Oh, and the Black Eagles. Sorry. Um, and I actually took a quiz online to kind of determine my house. I'm like, ooh, you know what? Let's do this. I'm in a Harry Potter mood right now. So I got the Golden Deer, and that's mm-hmm. considered like the underdog and like the like the lesser, almost like the Hufflepuff of the, um, which is funny because I'm a Hufflepuff too. So was I. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm in the Golden Never Deer, and it's really cool because all the, yeah, of course you are. Um, <laughs> yeah, all the different I thought characters. I was a Weasley. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, all the different characters in the Golden Deer, they come from like different backgrounds. So you have some from nobility and then you have others who come from just regular families and some who come from just like almost not poverty, but like lower, low class. Um, they're specifically, they're range based. So like a lot of like archers and mages in this class. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm really getting connected to a lot of the characters. The, the relationship system reminds me so much of Persona. And the writing style, the writing's insane. Like, fi- one of the big reasons why I couldn't, I couldn't get past six hours of Fire Emblem Awakening is I didn't really like the writing style. Um, this writing is ten times better, um, and you really are invested in the characters, and it makes you when you when you lose someone in battle, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just lost them. A um, couple characters I just want to sh- shout out is Lysithia. Lysithia, she's awesome. She's like by far my favorite character right now. She comes from like a very noble family, but she's like very humble in her nobility. Like she doesn't want people to know like where she's like, she doesn't like to reveal like, oh yeah, I'm from this big noble family. Uh, she's a mage too. And I, I love using mages when I'm on that tactics grid based combat. And like I said, I'm a sucker for that range class anyway. So like anytime there's a mage or an archer, I'm like all into it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. 
Um, I have no idea. I don't know how long the game is. I have no idea how close I am to the end. So I'm loving it. Dude, I'm so happy. Yeah, as as you know, we talked about this in our 1v1. People who know me, you know, I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan. I love Fire Emblem. Awakening was awesome. Stop slandering Awakening. But I have heard that Three Houses is like maybe one of the best ones that they've ever done. Um, so I'm just glad that we finally got you. You finally recognized the greatness of Fire Emblem because it's always been great. Um, well, the ones I played anyway, because they have awesome social links. They have awesome characters. They have awesome combat. Um, and they usually have good stories, too. So uh, shout out to Fire Emblem. I can't wait to play that myself when I finally get a Switch 2 when it, when they ever announce that. And it better be backwards comp- compatible Nintendo or else. All right. So, Sean, was that it for you? Was that? Uh, yeah, that's it. Hodge, do you have anything you want to say about Fire Emblem? I don't imagine so, but we want to give you a chance. No, I've. it's never been anything that's ever appealed to me, so. I have nothing to add. Shock. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Shocking. I'm not into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That was fun. It is now time. Let's get into the main event, shall we, boys? This is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to talk about our five games that we are most looking forward to for the rest of 2024. So it's we're about at the halfway point of the year pretty much here so we got six months left and there are some awesome games coming a lot of games coming and we're going to get into that so as usual we're going to go five four three two one roundhouse style and we're going to get into it utilize the time stance people if you're still listening to this awesome podcast please leave a like and a comment we appreciate it and let's get started shall we sean mason you are up first by random draw not really what is your number five game sir all right my number five game is a game that I just recently talked about on one of our DLC episodes, and that is Mario and Luigi Brotherhood. Um, I'm a sucker for, obviously, JRPGs, and I'm a sucker for these Mario RPG games. Oh my gosh. Uh, I've talked about how much I love Paper Mario. Uh, Mario and Luigi is basically a spiritual successor, kind of like a spinoff of Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. Um, Very similar combat, except you're only, you're just limited to Mario and Luigi running around and like, you know, the way that Brotherhood looks, it it took the art style of those like older games and kind of like elevated it to not like fully like oh my gosh we're going from two D to three D because the other games were kind of three D ish like especially the three D S versions of the games but like it, it's like evolution you can see the art style where it started on GBA and where it is now on Switch and I love it and I. I'm such, like I said, I'm a sucker for these Mario and Luigi games and Mario RPGs in general. The writing of these games is hilarious. It's so funny. Just like reading some of the stuff in these games, you find yourself constantly laughing. Um, I'm really interested in some of the, who's developing this game. There's no confirmed developer for this game. They didn't announce who's developing it. There are rumors online, but um, some of the stuff they've shown, they've shown that there's some new abilities in game with Mario and Luigi. Like they have these like brother, they call like, the game's called Brotherhood, but they have Brotherhood abilities where um, you do special moves and it consumes some of your MP. Um, I'm just overall, I'm really excited for this game. It comes out November 7th, 2024. Uh, I'm curious to see where the story goes because all the different Mario and Luigi games, the stories are so wonky and so unpredictable. Um, the enemies are all unique too. So like, we're not, it's not like, oh, we're fighting Bowser every time. It's like, no, well, one game you did, but one game you fought inside Bowser. That was pretty cool. Bowser's inside, but Mario and Luigi Bowser's inside story. That was pretty cool. But there's usually a, a whole unique big bad guy um, for the series. So I'm really excited to see what they do with this. And um, it saddens me to say that Mario and Luigi has become the the better RPG series than Paper Mario. Obviously, Paper Mario has the best game in Thousand Year Door. But the Mario and RPG series is really good. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Heck yeah. All right. I don't really have anything to say about that. I mean, I like RPGs, so maybe maybe I'll check that out when I eventually join the Switch Brotherhood. Um, Hi, do you have any thoughts on that? And then go ahead and give us your five afterwards. Yeah, of course. Um, I I was intrigued by this one, mostly because of the art style. Like I was I hadn't so I've never cool. seen a cell shaded like Mario game before. So that that's what stuck out to me. Also, isn't it called Brothership, not Brotherhood? I Did I say Brotherhood? Was, yeah. But I just I didn't want the shit. internet to yell at you. Uh, yeah, same brother shit. My bad. Yeah, but yeah, it's really it's that art style that it's, like I've gotten into games before purely because they're 
art style. Not even the, it's not the gameplay or the plot that intrigued me. It's just how it looked is why I got, that's why I got into the game guilt that I talked about uh, on our recommendations episode uh, because it looked like Coraline, a great movie. But uh, yeah, this art style is really what intrigued me. I'll have to look more into like what the gameplay and everything is, but it did, it did intrigue me enough to that. It's one that I'm, that, that I we weren't on the Nintendo episode, but that I uh, I was gonna talk about. I wanted to briefly kind of mention it. So if you talk about this game, brought it up. Is that's the first Nintendo Direct that really stuck out to me in a long time. Of where it's like, damn, these games look. Because most 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 Nintendo Directs, it's either none of these games are for me, or maybe I'll see one or two that I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good. But that Direct actually really stuck out to me as a really good show. And this was one of those games that I was watching. And I was just like. I actually might dust off the switch for this one at some point because yeah. it's a. I mean, when the game goes on sale in twenty seven years, I, I might give it a <laughs> shot. Uh, yeah, it just it it intrigued me, and I I think it's one I'm hopefully will check out one day. I was going to yeah. say you'll be able to pick it up for five dollars off on the Switch Seven, so look forward <laughs> yeah. to that in thirty years. Uh, save five bucks yeah. when they re release oh, it's, it. It's, it's a turn based combat, so um, mm. but with like inter there's like interactions in it too like like it will be like press a button and like you get more damage or like, like you have that. to time a correctly so it's like kind of like so. uh that's what i liked about the sea of stars combat was that turn based yeah kind of it's like similar to similar to that kind of thing yeah yeah it's similar to that yeah. uh yak is uh like a dragon is also like that too and that that has fun com- uh combat hmm. all right what was your uh number five Hodge? Oh, yes. My number five. All right. I actually picked six just in case this first one doesn't count. So I'll let you guys be the judge of this one. Uh, my first game was actually just Kenna Bridge of Spirits coming to Xbox uh, in August. That counts. I, I count okay. that. Because I've already, I already played it, beat it on PS5. I adore this game. But I'm just so excited to honestly buy it again and play it again. Because this is one of those games that uh this was it this was it felt truly next gen with how beautiful this game is it plays like a playstation 2 platformer like not to say it's dated but that's just what the vibe it gave me for but it it should genuinely the company that made this game was an animation studio and the cutscenes and stuff legit look like dreamworks movies like they are beautiful and so and it's very cute you find these little black creatures and stuff and it's just and obviously everyone knows i'm a platformer slut so i am real i really love the gameplay and it was like a souls like too i mean i played it on journalism mode because i'm not a psycho but but apparently the people who played it on more difficult uh settings said that it's actually a pretty tough game to play because it is a souls like in the combat but it's just a beautiful game that i cannot wait to experience again on xbox and just grab the achievements for it because it's and it's a, it's one of those small studios that you know I love supporting the smaller studios and being like, hey, I'll buy your game more than once. I've bought Hades two or three times at this point, so like I love Super Giant, and that's kind of how I feel about this Kenna game that I loved it that much on PS5. I was gonna play it again on PS5, but instead I'm just gonna buy it on Xbox and play it again there because I I really do want to support this studio because this game is so good. And honestly, I didn't even know it was coming to Xbox. Literally, I found out in one of Skillup's videos where he's like just kind of doing a news roundup and he goes, and in August, Ken is coming to Xbox. I'm like, wait, 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 when was this announced? And why did no one tell me? (laughs) Because everyone knows I love this game and no one freaking told me, but uh, yeah. So I'm just really excited for this game to come out to Xbox. Um, Yeah. I actually played on the uh, more difficult and it was very difficult. The more difficult. That's what I've heard. It was, it was very difficult. Um, Yeah. No, um, Kenneber to spirit. Is it Ken or is it Kena? Didn't they say it was Kena? I, Didn't they say that? I don't know. I, thought it, I thought it was Kenna. Kenna. I don't know. I've always said Kenna, but I don't know. It might be Kenna. I, I think know. it was. I don't know. All I, I know is, um, <laughs> yeah, the games. The game's great. Uh, really glad people on Xbox who haven't played it um, get to experience it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's gorgeous looking too. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. If it's Japanese, then it would be Kenna. That's how. No, would, I just know. I, I, I remember. I remember people saying Kenna because that's what like the developer on like an interview one time from mm. Kena, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. sure. Um, real quick, Hodge, um, just as an honorable mention, what was your sixth game? Just real quick, what was it? It would have been Star Wars Outlaws. Ah, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Let me get into my number five. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this here. So I have an honorable mention. And the reason why this is an honorable mention is because I don't believe it's actually going to come out this year. So I'm just going to say Avowed. I love Avowed. I love Blackrock. Shout out Obsidian. 
you know I love you. But I don't think this game's really coming out in 2024, so I'm not going to mention it. It's just honorable. <laughs> My actual number five is going to be Assassin's Creed Shadows. RPG Assassin's Creed is arriving in Japan, so that's kind of cool. Uh, will it be as good as Ghost of Tsushima? I doubt it, but I'm still excited. Uh, I'm going to play it, despite all the drama that surrounds it. Um, you know, people are upset that there's a black samurai. Um, I don't really care that much, um, but I think the game looks cool. I watched the gameplay review. I thought the graphics looked pretty awesome. I liked when they were going through. And of course, you know, Japan is just kind of beautiful anyway. You see like the Sakura trees with like the, the pink uh, leaves or whatever fall, falling and stuff. And it just looks really cool. You know, I love Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is my favorite Assassin's Creed game of all time after two. So I guess that would be my second favorite, actually. I forgot about two's the best. But besides two, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is, is my favorite. I love that game. And it is the same developer, which is why I bring this up. It's the same developer. Uh, Ubisoft Quebec, I believe, is the one who's making Shadows. So I have a lot of faith in them to deliver a great game. The combat looked fun. The graphics look good. I'm sure the story will hopefully be good. So I will be playing Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, I won't say day one because I'm just so busy, but I will definitely be playing it at some point soon after launch. So that's my number five pick, AC Shadows. Any thoughts, you guys, unless it's on your list on Shadows? I guess you um, kind of mentioned that, didn't you? I'll go first just so then Sean can get into his after. Uh, I just it's I've talked about it a couple times on this podcast. It's a game that I'm definitely interested in. I don't think it's going to be a day one for me as, as well because I like I, I still want to play Mirage also because I've heard it was decent and it's short, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's I keep going back and forth where I'm like, oh, I actually really do want to play this. And part of me is also like, eh, it looks fine. Because I just don't think it's going to live up to Ghost of Tsushima because that game no. perfected feudal Japan video game like it it that game is almost perfect, uh, if not perfect. So it's I just I'm in I know I shouldn't judge it to a game that's completely different from a different studio and like all that kind of stuff. But in the back of my head, I'm just going to be like, this isn't Ghost of Tsushima. This isn't Ghost of Tsushima. Like, and I just don't want that to kind of ruin it for me. So I, I feel like I will play it. Like I said, Ubisoft games, when they go on sale two weeks after they fucking release, uh, I might pick it up eventually, but it's not a day one for me, but I am definitely intrigued with this game for sure. Right on. Sean, take it away. Like I said, I've never played an Assassin's Creed game. If there if I were to play one, it would it would this this would likely drag me in given the setting. Mm -hmm. Um so as of right now, I don't plan on playing it. I, I think it's time. Thing. I think it's time we get you in there. We we already got you into Fire Emblem now. I think it's time to get you into Assassin's Creed, Sean. This is the game. <laughs> well, I, I didn't mention the reason why I'm playing Fire Emblem is because someone else is playing uh, Straw Hat, who was on the Nintendo mm -hmm. episode. He, he's playing Octopath, so he kind of made a little bit of a deal. And he's loving that, too. So, hey, Just real quick. Kind of cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Uh, real quick, shout out to Straw Hat, Parrot, and Poot for coming on our awesome uh, Nintendo episode with you. That was great. You guys all did a great job, and thank you guys for appearing on the show. Shout out. I did listen to it. It was a good episode, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're good dudes. I like them. I like them a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. So my next game. Oh, hang on. I'm just going to do one thing. Since you both uh, um, mentioned an honorable mention, yeah, I'm going to mention one. I'll mention one. And this one, I know nobody is going to have this. Or even you guys probably don't even know what it is. It's called Thank Goodness You're Here. It comes out on August 1st. It is defined as a 2D side-scrolling um it, what do they call it? A, spl a slap former. So it's like slap comedy platforming. Uh, the art style looks hilarious. And I looked at it and you, it, it's like kind of like a 2D side scroller and you're running around, but there's like gags going on. And it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a comedic game. Uh, wow. I'm kind of interested in it. It comes out August 1st. Um, I feel like I saw this, this, this screams handheld to me. So I, you know, I just wanted to throw that game out there, put that people on. This has like, like this has like a Where's Waldo art style. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, I think it's, it's so cool. Yeah, that's pretty like, cool. Where's Waldo if it was on Adult Swim? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I'd never heard of this. So that's an awesome honorable mention, Sean. Yeah. Um, all right. So my real number four, is, well, my number four is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Um, yeah, that comes out October 11th. So I'm pretty excited for this game. Um, 
spiritual successor to the Tenkaichi series, Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi. Absolutely adore these games. I've been waiting for this game essentially since 2008 when Tenkaichi 3 came out after I played that. Um, everything they've announced about it, it looked awesome. They've announced so many different characters already. The fighting looks crisp and looks so good. The animation looks amazing. It looks like Tenkaichi, but like next basically current gen so basically these are ps2 games looking like they're playing on ps5 it looks unbelievable um every couple weeks they're announcing like a batch of characters so they're doing like 12 at a time and these range from dragon ball to dragon ball super we have gt in there so they've confirmed all the different eras so i'm like really excited to you know finally get to do like you know we got super saiyan blue goku versus super saiyan 4 goku like who's actually gonna win or you can do like gt goku super like kid gt goku super saiyan 3 versus uh you know super goku so i'm I'm pretty excited for this yes hot take you want to know who the best goku is it's not even goku super saiyan rose goku was the best shout out shout out to goku black (laughs) all right well that's not goku either i know well i said it wasn't goku but that's the coolest one i think i like Uh, that well it's a completely completely different character but semantics um but yeah, no, I am like, I'm really hyped for this game. Like I said, I've been waiting for this game since 2008. So let's go. And it wasn't even announced. I, I never thought I'd see this day, this coming. Yeah, I, I know yes. Chris is excited. Um, yeah, I, so I don't really have any thoughts on this too much. Um, I think maybe I'll play this one day. I'll put it on the backlog, but it's not going to be very high priority on the backlog. Um, the main reason why I'm considering this is because I think it does have kind of like some RPG elements to it. I saw a screenshot where you kind of get to make a choice, like whether you go with someone or you go with someone else. So I like that type of stuff um, where you can kind of influence the story maybe um, and just hopefully have fun and experience a fun story. Um, so yeah, that is something that I might play one day, but it's going to be later on down the line. Um, so Hodge, any thoughts you have on Dragon Ball and then give us your number four. Yeah, I am so intrigued in it. So the only game Dragon Ball game that I've really been super excited about since the Budokai series was Kakarot and Kakarot was great until I fell off of it when, I think it was only like the Saiyan saga. I was fighting Vegeta and he was so overpowered over me that I was like, I don't want to go grind to, you know, be able to do this fight. So I just kind of fell off of it. But because these other fighting Dragon Ball games, I just none of them first. I was just terrible at fighters. I didn't know how to play that game. It looked really cool, but I just sucked at it. So I just didn't play that much of it. Me too. But uh, like I tried playing the Xenoverse games. I tried playing other fighting games that just Budokai was always my favorite. I loved that original Budokai trilogy. I thought it was perfect. It was just the, it was just that very simple side by side street fighter, moral combat type Tekken fighting game where you're just moving kind of back and forth on the 2d plane. And I thought that worked so well, but when they made it like an open world, you know, bigger arena type fighting, I was like, that's really cool. But it just doesn't seem cause like so much of it is you're just trying to fly towards the enemy to punch them. And it's just like, it felt too distant to me and I just couldn't land any of them. But this one is just such a love letter to the entire series, not even just Dragon Ball Z. It's not just going Saiyan to Majin Buu and ending. It's not just super. It has GT. It has the movies. It has characters from everything. And I don't, I don't really care about super. So every time they show a super character, I just kind of turn my brain off for a second. But, um, but just the fact that it's a love letter to the entirety of Dragon Ball Z is what, re- and it's a beautiful looking game. Like it looks like the anime, just three dimensional. And so I, I really am curious. I don't know if it's going to be a day one for me because as everyone knows, I do love Dragon Ball Z. It's one of my favorite things of all time, but these games just, yeah, they never, but I'm actually, I just found a screenshot of the Gohan with one arm from the history of Trunks movie. Like it's just such a random, like, no one really thinks about that as like a main character because it's just a Gohan that appeared for 15 minutes and died. Like, so the fact that they're even bringing that into the game, is just so, it's just so cool. That's why I loved the Ten- Budokai Tenkaichi series. Cause they, they really leaned into all those characters. Like mm-hmm. Tenkaichi three had like 200 characters. Yeah. And that, and I think that's not even like a, 
like an understatement. Like they had 200 characters to choose from. Yeah, this this game has kind of given me that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate vibe, where there's just like every single character ever is in this game, and that's kind yeah. of the vibe I'm getting. And I think that's really cool. So, yeah, I it's it's a game that I hope I love, but I'm not like so excited where I'm like I can't wait for Sparking Zero. Like also, I'm just never been a huge fighter game. Like I said, Budokai is my favorite, and those came out 20 years ago. So, uh, like. I, yeah, I, I want to be super excited, and I hope it's awesome. Like, it's just it's not one that I'm hyped about, but I hope I play it one day, and I hope it's awesome kind of game. Cool. All right. So, Hodge, oh, you're yeah. number four. <laughs> my number four, my bad, I forgot that I was next, uh, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Splintered Fate, Ooh. which is going to be exclusive to Switch and I think iOS for uh, the time being. And it's just... I'm, I'm not the biggest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, I like the Teenage Mutant Turtles. They were one of my – I loved them growing up. But it, it's never been like an IP where it's like, another TMNT thing's coming. Hell yeah, got to see it. But this game, when it was announced that it was basically like a co-op Hades, I was just like, I'm, I'm in. I'm already in. I, it's, it, looks, it looks like it plays like uh, – um, uh hades and it's just it's just filling that void for me of waiting till hades 2 comes out and Mm. it just seems like a game i could see myself loving uh playing and it's coming out actually in two or three weeks i think um so yeah it's it just looks it's it looks like hades but tmnt and i so it really i really want to hop in and try it it looks really fun all right what do you guys think uh, Sean, anything on that? Uh, I'm not a big teen- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. Like, I was born, like, right after, like, that kind of that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles era. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like um, Shredder's Revenge, though. That was, like, the first ever, like, Turtles thing I consumed. Uh, and then I watched that movie they released, like, last year or two years ago with that really cool art style. I think it was Mutants. Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, really good. Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, that was a really cool art style. I watched that, which I really liked. So those are the only two really Ninja Turtle things I've ever really consumed. So um, if if this game does well, um, I'll probably maybe try it one day. But I'm hoping it does really well because I know a lot of Turtles fans are pretty pumped for w- the way that the series has been handled over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm a Turtles fan. Casual. Um, this game looks cool. I might play it at some point. Um, but I haven't played a ton of Ninja Turtles stuff lately. Um, I did try that one, um, that was like on the, it was on game pass. It was like the beat em up game where you co-op Yeah, shredders revenge, shredders revenge. I just, yeah. just mentioned it. Yeah. I played a little bit of that. I couldn't remember the title of that game, but, um, I played a little bit of that with my brother. And it was pretty fun, Um, but we actually, we didn't beat the game. We beat like a a few stages and then we ended up kind of moving on, Um, but it was cool. Um, So let me go ahead and get into transition here into my number four here. I got my phone out here. I guess my list is on there. So my number four is going to be, Sean, you're going to like this. You ready? It's Weebree, you guys. My number four is going to be Metaphor Refantasio from Atlas. I'm looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this. It is original kind of persona devs making a new IP that's kind of set in more like medieval fantasy type type setting and vibes. So I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be awesome. Um, and I will be there playing it. I, I can't wait. I think the art style looks cool. Of course, it's going to have great music. It's an Atlas game and they always have amazing music. Um, the combat looks pretty fun. How like you can kind of go into like an action combat and then switch it to turn based combat. Um, I don't know exactly how that works. I think maybe once you stun them or something, it goes to turn based. I'm not positive, um, but it looks awesome. And I am looking forward to this. I feel like Persona is very cool. One of my favorite um, JRPGs for sure. Definitely. Um, and I love the. I love the combination of the social links and then the combat. Like it's almost two games in one. Um, But I've always felt like, you know, I'm a, I'm a medieval fantasy guy. Um, That's like my setting. I love, you know, elder scrolls and stuff like that. So this is kind of like taking it out of the modern school setting and more into like something that's more up my alley with that fantasy vibe. Um, So I am very excited for metaphor re Fantasio. That is my number four game. Um, Hodge and Sean, do you have any thoughts on this one? Let Hodge go first. 
Uh, yeah, I'll just kind of get myself out of the way because, yeah, as everyone knows, I'm not really a big Atlas gamer. Uh, it This is one that when I saw the trailer, I was like, this actually does look really cool. Like Persona is one that has interested me. It's just every time I'm getting to that point of like, I am going to play Persona. I just am reminded, yeah, it's 100 hours long. You ready? I'm like, nope, I'm not. And then I don't play it. Uh, so that's kind of how I feel with this. If if this one comes out and everyone's like, yeah, it's a 30 hour campaign. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. But it, it's not going to be. And so I know I'm not going to play it, but it's, it's, it looks cool. It's just it's one of those games where it's like it's too long. I know I'm never going to get to it. But, I mean, maybe it'll be 30 hours. We don't know, but I doubt it from their history. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. So I it, it looks cool. It's just I know it's one I'm probably never going to get to. What about you, Sean? I, I'm sure this is up your alley. Might even be on oh, your yeah, list. Um, it's not on my list, but I'm uh, oh. really, I am really excited for it. Uh, I'm, n- I'm not going to play it day one. Um, I actually might actually wait, like, just because Dragon Ball comes out that day too. So I'm choosing Dragon Ball over that. They come out on the same day. Um, I will get it shortly thereafter, though. I'll probably wait a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I am excited. You know, I had talked about how much I'm enjoying SMT5 and how much I've liked Persona in the past. So. Um, I'm really excited to see what where they take a new IP and you know what they do with it. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. And like you had mentioned that the, they go from action to turn based. That, that whole idea is really fascinating to me. Like how they're going to implement that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I thought you were going to say when you said you might wait. Um, I thought you were going to say because they might do the traditional Atlas thing where in like oh, a, yeah. a year I mean, they come out with it. like a yeah. super version that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably was- they probably will. I will say I really like the logo. That's the graphic design nerd in me. I really like that. Just the pointed A with like kind of the bow tie look. I, yeah, I really like that. <laughs> Very cool. But yeah. All right, Sean. What's, what's your number three then? Uh, my number three is The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, another game shown at the Nintendo Direct. Now, I am a huge, huge Legend of Zelda fan. Um, it's one of my favorite series of all time. I wasn't, I'm not a big fan of Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, um, but I am a huge, huge into like the older, more traditional Zelda games, and especially 2D Zelda holds a really special place in my heart. And when I found out, when I saw that they were doing a brand new 2D Zelda game in that Link's Awakening art style, which is just absolutely gorgeous, like, you know, basically it's like you're playing like a diorama, basically, um, I, I, I couldn't believe it. it. Yeah, and I, I I have been asking for a new 2D Zelda for a long time in that art style. Heck, I would have taken a remake. And I am so curious to see how this, where they go with this, because you actually get to play as Zelda this time. Like, you're, you're playing as Zelda. Spoiler, that, that boy in the green tunic was not Zelda. That, that was Link, for those <laughs> who didn't know. Just blew someone's mind right there. I was going to make um, a joke. You beat me to it there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep, you're actually playing as Zelda. And it's kind of cool how you can... The way that they showed it, like you can basically t- like conjure up items you find in the real world and use them like all over the map to either defeat enemies or like jump over gaps. You can use like a like a dresser to like get over like a gap in the area. Um, and I'm the map looked very familiar to a link to the past map, but there were some new areas that I'm not familiar with, and I played a link to the past a million times. So I'm really curious to see where this goes. And I, I just can't wait for this. September 26th, this is day one. I actually pre-ordered um, the collector's edition that comes, the, like, the collector's edition like, Switch handheld version, which I will not open. It's like a golden Switch. I'm not opening that. Um, yeah, I'm so excited for this. Okay. Hey, let me give my thoughts here, and then we'll pass it over to Hodge because he's going to be next on the list anyway. So... Uh, I think they missed an opportunity to call this the Legend of Link. Legend of Link. That yeah. would have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> the Legend of Link, but you play as Zelda. Yeah. You know, just yeah, I made a, I made a, yeah, I made a joke about that on the uh, Nintendo on our Nintendo recap. Uh, I was like, how did they not do? They should have done it. That would have been awesome. That's that's uh, awesome. That would have been dude. hilarious. Even if it was just like a fake out, like they had it, and they're just yeah, we're just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, this game looks pretty cool to me. I think the art style is beautiful. I think it's cool how they're leaning into their physics engines like they did with the last game where you could pop out like uh, and be creative and pop out, like you said, uh, the tables and the the stools and and, and all these things to traverse the world and kind of get creative with it. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, this is uh, this is a game that I will not be playing because I don't own a Switch right now. Um, but if I do, when I do eventually get the Switch too, it is a game I will consider. Um, but probably will be on the lower tier for me um, personally. But I think it looks awesome. Zelda is obviously an OG uh, game in the industry that we must respect. So uh, shout out to that game and their fans uh, are going to get to finally play really well and truly as Princess Zelda. So. Um, Hodge, go ahead and give us your thoughts and then your number three. So this is the game that stood out the most to me during that Nintendo Direct. I thought this looked amazing. Like, I love that puzzler. Like, I'm a puzzler platformer, as people know. So kind of doing that thing of, like, you, uh, what is it called? They're just called Echoes when you learn to, like, recreate things. Um, yeah, they call it, they call them Echoes. Yeah, so, like, the Echoes of making tables and then stacking them so you can get up walls. It's like, that is right up my alley. And actually, I own the Link's Awakening remake. I just, I can't remember so why. Good. I bought it and I just didn't play it. It's I can't so remember. Good. It's I, so good. Yeah, if, it was, if, I, if I was busy, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself next week when, or two weeks. Uh, it's going to be on my games we're playing as Link's Awakening. I do, because it the art style is why i bought it because again i'm a guy who has played games purely because of their art style and that Link's awakening style slash echoes of wisdom style is so cool that like yeah you putting it as like you're playing a diorama like that's very true it looks like you're like looking down into a diorama and so i'm super excited for this game i if i do play Link's awakening and beat it and love it and all that I might actually make this a day one game, which I haven't done for a Switch game since. Oh shit, uh, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> when the console for the day came out, yeah, I yeah. I bought a Switch. I think I, it came into stock like two weeks after it launched, and that was like, all right, no, I played uh, uh, Sword and Shield the day it launched. I remember I did, and I it did not like that game. But anyway, uh, yeah, this echo, but this game looks awesome. I, I'm so excited. I, I knew the second they announced it, I know like, oh, the internet soy boys are going to get very angry. Are you playing as a woman? Nintendo went woke, but this game looks so fun. I'm so excited for this one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play Link's Awakening before the next episode, at least try or start it. Uh, cause yeah, this, I, it's one of that I, I wanted it and I just haven't played my switch in so long that I forgot that I owned it. But then upon seeing this announced, I'm like, oh yeah, I own that game. I need to beat it. So I'm going to play it. And then, yeah, I'm super excited for this game. It looks so, it looks so much fun. Um, but my next game is, uh, Flintlock Siege of Dawn. Oops, that didn't paste right so i got it i got uh, it yeah <laughs> flintlock siege of dawn uh i actually i didn't realize it until i was put my list together but this and the teenage mutant ninja turtle games come out a day apart so uh teenage mutant ninja turtles might have to wait just a little bit uh whereas flintlock i it's a game pass game so i will be playing it day one uh it just it's one that ever since it was announced at, at the game showcase like two years ago or whatever i've been so excited to play this one it looks so much fun it looks beautiful the gameplay looks so cool uh, I love the setting of that that steampunk like fantasy look, like the Order eighteen eighty six, uh, Bioshock Infinite, like that steampunk vibe is so cool. And this game just looks awesome, and I'm so excited for it. And I actually didn't realize until I was looking at the list that it was. Co- I knew it was coming out this year. I didn't realize it was coming out in three weeks. So that's wow. <laughs> was great news for me finding that out. And so yeah, I'm 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 stoked for this game. It looks so cool. All right. Sean, any thoughts? Um, I actually, I I remember like hearing about it, but I had actually never really looked it up. So I just quickly looked it up. Um, it looks pretty cool. I mean, they're 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 saying it's kind of be like a kind of a combination of like a God of War and an Elden Ring. So it's like a God of War combat, but kind of like a not like Souls like, but similarly to Souls like. But they're they're making it a little bit more accessible. There's gonna be an, there's going to be a, an easier mode. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Um, Hodge, I'll be curious to to know what you think because if you like it i might you know might jump right on that yeah i hope it's not painfully difficult because then i will fall like i wanted to play liza p but i got my ass kicked in the opening and i was just like i uh, nope <laughs> so i don't want i hope that doesn't happen with this one either or, or also so yeah i really hope this is awesome and i'm really excited for it in a couple weeks it comes out yeah they're calling this game a soul's light is what they called it mm-hmm. um so it probably will be difficult but not nearly as difficult as like uh, That's fine. a dark souls, but yeah, this game looks cool. It's something I've had my eye on for quite some time. It is a game that I would love to play. Um, but again, it's, it's just got 
there's just so many games, man. I don't know when I'll be able to play it because I have 50 games to play. Um, but it is going to be on the backlog. It will be one of the 50 games. Um, and I, hopefully one day I will get to play it because I think it looks very cool. I like the character. I like the art style. I like what they're doing with the combat. Um, and it looks really cool. And uh, it, Hodge and Sean, if you guys go ahead and beat that, you guys, we could do the Flintlock spoiler cast with you too. <laughs> Yeah. But that'd be cool. But uh, all right, let me go ahead and get into my number three game here. So my number three game is another Ubisoft open world game. Look at me. Uh, it's going to be Star Wars Outlaws. So Star Wars Outlaws, I think, looks pretty cool. You, you know, you're playing as the female, uh, whatever she is. She's an outlaw, I guess, uh, like a smuggler, an outlaw. And it's open world and you're going to be doing all kinds of cool Star Wars things. And it just looks cool um, from what I've seen, like the the story stuff, the, you know, hopefully there's some hopefully there's some dialogue options and stuff. I love that. I'm a sucker for that. Um, but, you know, if you give me a cool Star Wars world to explore with some fun combat and some traversal and hopefully it will just be a good time. So that's one that I have been looking forward to for a long time. And uh, yeah, I don't know what more to say. It's Star Wars. You know, <laughs> it looks cool. I'm not. A, I've fallen off a bit on the Star Wars with like the media side, but for the games, uh, I'm still there. I'm still there. So um, that's it for me. That's my number three, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, do you guys have any thoughts of that? Let me go. Hodge, you first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, this was an honorable mention. If Ken hadn't counted, I would have put this on there because that is the, that is true. I don't think about that often, but you are right that in terms of like media outside of games, the, Star Wars is basically dead to me. I just don't care anymore. But I, with games, they haven't missed like the Jedi Survivor games or Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, both amazing. This one looks this one looks really fun. It doesn't look like amazing. It doesn't look like a ten out of ten from what I've seen. It looks like it'd be a solid seven and a half, eight out of ten kind of game where it's like I really enjoyed it, but it's not like we're shouting from the rooftops. But I do like the vibe of it's you're the third person shooter because you're a bounty hunter. You're not playing as another Jedi who escaped Order sixty six because apparently that order was terrible and didn't kill anyone. Um <laughs> so it's just I, I'm happy that it's just exploring a different re- uh uh like realm in star wars lore because i they're gonna have the huts in there for the member berries and stuff obviously like uh, because you're a bounty hunter so you deal with the huts and they're gonna have that kind of stuff in it which is kind of the oh i see it i remember and so the that kind of stuff i don't really care about but the 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 gameplay itself the openness and what it's about it looks really cool and so i'm excited and i think i think it will be a pretty sweet game but yeah, how about you, Sean? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty interested in this game. I, I've been in a Star Wars mood so much so that I'm actually watching The Acolyte. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because like you guys know I'm not I'm not a big show guy, so I'm actually watching that. But I've been in such a Star Wars mood that the other night I watched Attack of the Clones. Nice. Um, worst one, but yeah, I, good. Uh, worst worst prequel, prequel. not worst prequel. Yeah, worst prequel. Worst prequel. Um, but yeah, I've been in a Star Wars mood, and um, I've always been so fascinated with like. A bounty hunter or like just like that whole aspect of star wars is really cool and i definitely agree i think the huts are definitely going to be involved in this mm-hmm. um and i love the effect that this is like a story-based star wars game like mm-hmm. we're not you know we're not just this isn't like a, this isn't star wars battlefront where we're having a battle pass and we're being thrown in oh you gotta buy this you gotta buy that nope sorry um so i am intrigued i don't have a deep history with star it's funny like i do not have a deep history with star wars games huge star wars fan as a kid the only games I played were Battlefront. Never played anything else. No idea why. Just never did. So I am intrigued by this. And it, it was on my list of games I was choosing from that I like picked originally and then narrowed it down. So excited to see how this does. Oh, yeah. All right. Right on. Um, and then, Sean, I think you are up right now with your number two. Yeah, my number two is Dragon Quest HD 2D. Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Um, this game, oh my god. This game looks insane, like how good this looks. It takes that that 2D HD art style from Octopath and like to the umpteenth degree. Yeah. Um, like I didn't think it would look better than that, and it does. It looks, I, I couldn't get over how good this game looked. Um, also, I love the fact that 
they're taking an old Dragon Quest game that has essentially been really difficult to play and like the, like just to find and play legally without emulating mm-hmm. and giving giving it access to us. And it's I like how dry, they're doing is they're they're releasing this one is the first in a trilogy of games, so they're releasing this one first. And Dragon Quest is the classic turn based JRPG. Like if you want like a real turn based JRPG, you play Dragon Quest. Um, the story is not. It's not like groundbreaking. I'm sure they are going to make some additions to the the story to make it more like, hey, this is a 2024 JRPG with like a a great story with uh, you know um, characters that are really in depth. It wasn't really like that back when it first came out, but I'm really excited to just see where this goes because this game is looks gorgeous. The world is great. It's accessible too. The original game's like 20 hours, and that was considered long back then. Like the world is a long game. It was 19, you know, 1993, 1994 when it came out originally. So I cannot wait for this game. All right. Yeah. Uh, actually, you go first because I'll be up next. Yeah, I think uh, that you, like you said, Sean, um, this game looks absolutely insanely gorgeous. Like the graphics that they put on this is like a master class. Like this is what we want for HD 2D games. Like I said on our 1v1, like this is HD 2D porn right here. Like it is so um I can't believe it. Like I thought uh, Octopath and I thought Euden Chronicles looked good. This is like next level. Like this is like 8K visuals it looks like. <laughs> like it's so crisp and awesome and it, it makes 8K. Yeah, it looks insane. Like I want to play it just because of the art style. Like uh it just looks beautiful. Um but I've never played a Dragon Quest game. Um as I understand it Dragon Quest is like a hardcore like masochist type uh RPG with a lot of grinding, isn't it? It's very, it's very much the traditional, like when you think traditional JRPG, like we have our warrior, we have our mage, we have our white mage, we have our thief, we have our monk, like it's those traditional classes. And it's very much like you are going to grind this out and you are going to get XP. They're like, oh, we don't have a side quest thing. You're, you're, you make your own side quests Mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll play it because it, it might be just a little too grindy and a little bit too much for me. But man, it looks so good that I want to play it. So who knows? Maybe one day. Um, but let me pass it to you, Hodge, for thoughts on that and then get into your number two as we do. Yeah, I've never played a Dragon Quest. And honestly, it just feels like a sin from me with how much I love Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball Z and all of his other stuff he's made what that he made in his life and i know he's really just kind of the artist on the game but it's i when i saw this trailer well one it hit me for two reasons one as you guys said this game is beautiful it it looks so good i love that like octo the reason i played i played the only the demo for octopath because it didn't grab me but the that art style is like i've said a hundred times just this episode that art style has gotten me into games before and that's what octopath made me reach out and seeing this hd 2d with this remake i was like i've never played a dragon quest game and i kind of feel like this should be my entrance into it because i really do want to just love more of what akira toriyama has put into this world and it just feels like i would I just, I don't know. It looks so gorgeous and it's just such a vibe that if it is grindy, I might fall off of it eventually. I don't know, but I really do feel like I might just buy it and try it. And even if I spend 60 bucks on a game that I end up falling off of whatever, but I, it, it does look so good that Mm. I really want to give it a try. And yeah, I, even if it's not the RPG style that I've enjoyed or in my life or whatever, it still looks really freaking cool. And it's, and it, with it being an old one, it was an old long RPG where it's like 25 hours. So I could do it. <laughs> Not a hundred hours like they are today. So yeah, I, it, I definitely, I definitely want to give this a try at some point. Um, But my number, what do we two, two. Uh, two. is yeah. I've, it's funny. I've, I feel like I've talked about all these games on other episodes, but they're all just being combined into this list is call of duty black ops six. Like mm. I said, it was on my showcase top five or top whatever we did. I think it was five. And uh, 
I, I've, I haven't been this excited for a Call of Duty since like Modern Warfare 3 or something like that. I, or actually, it was actually technically Call of Duty 4 Remastered that came with the Infinite Warfare was the one I was excited about. But um, I haven't been this, I've, I haven't seen an Xbox or a Call of Duty trailer that has actually been like, oh my God, I can't wait for this to come out since this one. And just the fact that it's on Game Pass is just that much better. I don't have to buy it. I can just play it. And if I don't like it, I move away. But I feel like this is the first time they've come to call of duty and given it this huge step up that it needed because the last time they tried improving call of duty was when they added the like the jet packs when titanfall got popular in advanced warfare and i was like i don't want this futuristic bullshit just give us ground action call of duty which again is why i liked x defiant it's like old school call of duty and even though this one is going to be more advanced it's going to be in the black ops universe and all that stuff. And it's going to have the omnidirectional movement, which is probably going to make sweaty sweats, sweater, sweatier. Um, is it just looks so freaking cool. And I'm actually so excited for this one. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm excited for call of duty for the first time in forever. And it's just a weird feeling. So yeah. Uh, what about you, uh, Sean, how do you feel about this? I'm happy for those that are excited that, you know, those COD people who are like looking for something new, it's really excited. I'm happy my wife's really excited for this. I'm happy that a lot of people who seem to have fallen off Call of Duty are like, this is, we're back. We're back. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how people like it. I haven't played Call of Duty in, since Black Ops. So, um, to my understanding, this is, a, this is like, um, timeline wise, doesn't this take place like right after Black Ops 2? Uh, yeah, I think it's like adjacent to two. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm you know looking forward to, it. you know, if it does really well, maybe I'll pick up black ops two, play through that campaign and then maybe play through this. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so yeah, black ops six, um, as I mentioned on previous episodes, this is something that I am going to try out. I've been very disillusioned with call of duty lately. Um, I've really fallen off a lot. Um, the game is just too sweaty for me these days. Like, uh, I don't like the map design. Like I've mentioned, like the chaotic map design, they moved away from the simple three lane maps where when you were, when you were navigating through the map, it used to be, you only had to look at the two or three spots. You'd look to your left, you'd look straight ahead and you might check a window. Nowadays, you got to look at like 40 different areas and you're getting shot in the back and stuff and just dying. And it's just too much. Like I'm too old for that shit. And you got all these people sweating and sliding and jumping and doing all kinds of stuff like it, like it's a freaking tournament. And they're all hopped up on Adderall and G fuel and stuff. And it's like, I can't, <laughs> I can't keep up with this dude. Um, so, but this is pretty much the, the last hurrah and the last shot for me with call of duty. Cause it is Treyarch. Um, historically Treyarch has been my favorite call of duty developer. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they will create a fun game, but I am not super optimistic that they will, because I think the core issues will still be there. And the core issues for me, as I've mentioned, are skill-based matchmaking. It's too damn sweaty. And um, the map design, like I literally just mentioned. So those are still going to be there. So I, I'm not super optimistic, but I am hopeful. I'm going to play it. And this will be the last chance. If, if they fail this one, I will probably not be playing much, if any, Call of Duty in the future um, until they come out and like do something drastic. But but yeah, so Black Ops 6, I think that was a good pick, Hodge. Uh, let me go ahead and move into my number two pick. This is one that I've talked about a lot. You guys already know probably what's coming. It's going to be Bioware, Dragon Age, The Veil vale Guard. Really excited about this game. I love Dragon Age. I love Bioware. We're talking about my favorite developer. We're talking about one of my favorite series. This is Western RPG greatness at its peak. I'm talking about the old Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins 2 and uh, Inquisition were also great. But yeah, I can't wait for this. It looks awesome. The graphics are beautiful. The combat looks like it's going to be fun. Um, you're going to have a lot of different choices, apparently. You know, they showed that in the gameplay. I love dialogue. I love choices. Um, these are the things that speak to me, as you guys know. So I'm looking forward to this. There's going to be romance. There's going to be violence. There's going to be blood. There's going to be all kinds of adult stuff. This is a game for me, and I cannot wait. I will be there day one. Whatever game that I'm playing at the time, it might get set aside. It might just get set aside. We'll see. If I'm really close, maybe I'll finish it and then I'll hop into it. But I'm going to be there. Dragon Age The Veil Guard is my number two. 
I would go on and talk about this much longer, but I've talked about this on so many episodes already. You guys know how I feel. I cannot wait. Hodge, any thoughts on Dragon Age, the Veil Guard that yeah, you haven't I've, already said? Yeah, I have really nothing to add because I've talked about it before. This has never been a series I've been into, so I don't. I'm happy that it looks awesome for people, especially after that terrible fucking trailer that they put out. The the Marvel but, trailer? Yeah. Yeah, but thankfully the gameplay reinvigorated everyone's excitement in this game. So those who are going to love it, I'm happy for them. But yeah, I mean, I do, like I said, I do have Dragon Age Origins. Maybe I will play it one day. But uh, as of right now, I, I don't, it's not at the top of my list. So I'm happy this is a game's coming out for those who are, who are loving it, but not for me. A shout out to Deontay from our discord. He, uh, you know, he just recently beat dragon age origins. Um, and he said it crashed, it crashed multiple times on him, but he still liked it. He still had a great time. So that's the problem when you go back and play some of these really old games on PC. A lot of times you have technical issues. Uh, if you play it on console, it's usually good, but, uh, Sean hit us with some dragon age and then your number one game, which we already know what it's going to be, but go ahead. This game looks dope. Um, I'm pretty excited for it, actually. I've never played a Dragon Age game, and, you know, I love... I know a lot of people are, like, flanking them for the art style they chose, like, the art direction that they're going in, and I think it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It looks very, like, um, almost a, lot, a little bit more anime to me, so I'm maybe that's why I'm kind of intrigued by it. Um, maybe not anime, but kind of... It, it's, it's it's more brighter. unique. It's brighter it's, than, a, it's, than yeah. a medieval game would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm intrigued by it. I'm glad that the gameplay resonated with people over the um, kind of weird trailer they showed originally. Yeah. Uh, what I am a little worried about, not worried, but like I'm concerned that a lot of people saw that original trailer and they go, oh, it's Bioware and they don't make good games anymore. So why am I going to touch this? But I'm glad to hear that the gameplay came out well. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it, actually. I, I think I will play it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, they did themselves no favors with that trailer. Um, so they're going to have to have a stellar launch and get some good press and some good reviews to really get some of these people off the fence. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping. But yeah. Sorry, Sean. Uh, your number one game when you're ready. I'm excited. All right. My my number one game. Conquer. No, um, not Conquer. Um, <laughs> Dance Dance Revolution, I thought. No, no, yeah, just no. If, was, if there was a real thing on, if there was a real DDR game, that would be on this list. <laughs> but no, um, um, let's let's not let's be serious here. Uh, no, my game is Trails Through Daybreak, The Legend of Heroes: Trails Through Daybreak. This comes out this upcoming week, July fifth, this Friday or Thursday, whatever day it is, either Thursday or Friday. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this game for forever. It seems like. Um, this is just a continuation of a series that I absolutely love. The reviews just came out, and it's getting outstanding scores. Uh, I know Mr. Matty Plays gave it. He says it's his game of the year is our best RPG he's played, and that includes a, a year of so many good RPGs. Um, just I've, I've talked about this so much, how this is such like a slow build with the story, but the payoffs when they hit in this game, it's so worth it, and you get so connected to some characters. And some characters who they they die, and you're like you really feel it, or you really have a connection with um, the relationships you build. And this is like kind of starting a new arc. So it is a new story, but there are some connections to the older games. So I am really looking forward to this. Uh, I I can't believe it's already here. Um, I'm so ready. Like. I am so ready. I'm going to be done with SMT five by then. And I'm just going to jump right into this game. Yeah. Trails, you know, you got to spend your 900 hours to get to it, but it's so worth it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I, I'll get a couple quick bars off real quick and then pass it to Hodge uh, for trails. As, as we have mentioned in the past, I have not played any of the games, so I will not be playing this game either. Um, but who knows? Maybe one of these days. I mean, people keep trying to to get me to play these games. I mean, Sean's been trying to get me to play these games. Maddie's always trying to get the entire world to play these games. He won't shut up about them. So <laughs> apparently they're awesome. And uh, it's just so many games. That's what really intimidates me. Um, but the game looks really awesome. Uh, great graphics, great art style. Um, so I'm happy for you, Sean. 
it sounds like, man, this series is really, really rewarding their fans because it feels like they come out with a new game like every damn year. Like, how are they pumping these games out so fast? What are they well, doing? It's because they've been out in Japan already, and we oh. used to it used to take like it used to take like two to three years for them to come to America. But now they're like, oh, here's one, here's another one, here's another one, and like we're just like this game. The sequel is already out in Japan. Oh, okay. This game, and it's been out for like two years. Like, okay, I thought they were just developing games like at insane pace. I was like, no. what is going on? Okay, like we got Trails from Zero last year. That came out in like 2012 in um, Japan. Jeez. So, yeah. All right. But, Hodge. Hey, I'm excited. Um, this game, yeah, it's a it's a series I'm probably never going to touch. But You're the, gonna play this, yeah. this game, it, I'm looking at just screenshots, and it, it's a gorgeous game. Like, I'm very fascinated by the look of this game. And if it wasn't the the 97th game in a 400,000 hour series, I would probably look into it more, but uh, yeah, just for now, it's kind of one of those things again, where I'm like, I'm happy for the people who love this series, but it's probably not one I'm going to touch because of the, of my OCD of having to play every game leading up to a a game. So uh, yeah, (laughs) it looks cool, but I'm not going to touch it for sure. But there is a game that you are going to touch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number one game is, I mean, I don't know, it might be a surprise to you guys, but anyone who knows me probably knows it's not that much of a surprise, especially once I say it, is Astrobot. I am Woo! so, so stoked for this game. I actually just watched uh, Shillip did a preview for it on his YouTube uh, a couple days ago, two or three days ago, and uh, it, he just talked about how basically the one that came with the PlayStation five was a very good tech. De- it was a very fun game. Everyone loved it, but it was a very good tech demo for the dual sense. And <clears throat> this one takes that to a new level, just a completely new level where every little thing in the game is something you're going to feel on that 3d haptics on that controller, which you, it's one of those things really you have to play to understand what people are talking about when they say that, because the feeling is just so weird and so cool but uh yeah he said that this is just a step up in every way it's just a joy to play it's one of those really charming games where every little thing that happens you just have a smile on your face because they got little astrobot like kratos and atreus on their boat doing their weird stuff and like it's just it's just so cute and so fun and i'm excited and the fact that they said that it's going to be like a there's like 80 levels, but it's like a 20 hour game. It's like, it's not a super huge commitment, but it's going to be, have so much uh, nostalgia, but for the, or not nostalgia, but like homages to the PlayStation's history and all. It's just, I, I'm so excited for this game. Me being the platform whore that I am and just, and it's such a shame that not many games have taken that much advantage of the dual sense. Like really all it is, is sometimes the trigger's harder to pull for certain things or the vibration might be a little different, but I feel like they don't do as much. And I said this when they announced it, I remember I was like, that's going to be a feature that's barely touched. It's, everyone's going to say it's super cool. And then they'll never do anything with it. And that's kind of what they've done with the dual sense. So I'm really happy that this being a PlayStation first party game that they're like, no, we're going to like do the dual sense right with this game. And so I'm just so excited. And like the games are fun on their own, but that just adds another level to it where you feel the game a little more. And yeah, me being the platform lover that I am, I am so, so excited for this game. It's definitely my m- number one most um, anticipated game for the rest of the year. But yeah. Right on. I was going to say, you were, you're talking about how they had Kratos and, uh, and, and boy, uh, boy getting in the boat. I was just gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna say. I hope they didn't reuse that boat animation. That would be, <laughs> be, a, be an outrage. Yeah, it'd be so lazy. God. Yeah, those those jerks. Yeah. Uh, Sean, hit us with some Astro thoughts. Dude, I'm I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, this just missed my list. Um, I like like Hodge, like you. I love platformers, and this pays such homage to like PlayStation history. Mm-hmm. And I love that they're doubling down on that. Like they had that in the last in the launch one. And now like, it just seems like this is going to be the Astrobot thing. Like we're going to pay so much respect to all, to the history of PlayStation, regardless mm-hmm. of like how long ago it was. Like you get to ride around in the controller. Like you had said, you get to like see all these different characters. And this game seems very expansive too. Like there's going to be like 
40 different levels, 40 different worlds to travel. I, I can't wait. Um, definitely day one for me. Definitely. Yeah. September 6th. Woo. All right. There you go. So that is Astro Bot. Um, Hodge is number one. Good stuff. Um, I don't really have anything to say about this. It's not a game that I'm really interested in. I don't want to bring down the mood, though. I'm not going to be a hater. Um, <laughs> it looks great, and I hope you guys have fun. Let me go ahead and hop into my number one game of all time here. And I, I would imagine that a lot of people hopefully know what I am about to say, because this is a game that I have not been able to shut up about in Discord, on multiple podcasts. And of course, I'm talking about EA Sports return Ooh. to the gridiron after 11 years. I'm talking about college football 25. It's going to be the best game ever made. Maybe a slight exaggeration there, but just, <laughs> but just a little bit, not much. Uh, this game's going to be so great. Everything that they've shown has looked phenomenal. Uh, they keep coming out. They just did the sights and sounds trailer just the other day. Dude, they, the attention to detail that they have put into this game, this is a labor of love for these developers. They're big college football fans. They're big fans of the old games, and you can just tell. There's 134 teams in this game because it's college. Um, they have taken the time to go out. And, and do the stadiums for every single team with immaculate detail. They've got small things like there's there's some university that's super small that nobody really even knows about that has like a, a fountain in their stadium and they've completely designed that perfectly. Um, they have custom audio and commentary for all, every school, like custom sayings. Like they had one in the trailer. They're like, who gives a hoot? The owls do for like some super small school that like probably not many people care about, but they have put the attention to detail. The pageantry is there. They got the bands, the fight songs, the crowd is super animated and changes based on the games. You got Penn State doing the famous whiteout games. You got Georgia doing blackout games. Um, you've got my Ohio State Buckeyes. They're doing script Ohio and the dudes running out there to dot the I like the like the band does. Dude, it's going to be so awesome. It's going to be so awesome. I cannot wait. Uh, coming up on July 2nd, which I think is Tuesday, they're going to be doing the dynasty mode deep dive. And that is my favorite mode. That's where you get to pick your team and then you get to build them up and recruit talent and then play the games and win national championships and win Heisman trophies with your players. Dude, it's going to be so great. I just cannot wait. I am so hyped. I'm going to be playing this. It's going to absorb my life. This is definitely going to take away from all the other games I want to play because I'll be playing too much damn college football, but damn it, I'm going to have fun. Um, so that is my number one game, EA Sports College Football 25. Woo! I haven't been this excited in a game in so long. I'm more excited about this than I was for Starfield and stuff like that. Like, I just can <laughs> not freaking wait. I've been waiting for 11 years, boys. Any thoughts on this? I know you guys aren't. You guys aren't so huge sports fans. or Well, you are sports fans, but not like game sports. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> you are sports fans, but I don't think you're like huge sports gamer fans. Uh, but maybe a little bit. What do you think about college football? Uh, uh, well, on our on our one-on-one, -on -one, I talked about how much I used to only play jrpgs and sports games and platformers that was like all i played mm -hmm. uh, i am pretty excited for this. i'm not the biggest college football fan but uh i'm looking forward to this because uh ncaa 14 was an awesome game yep. like the last college game they made so this looks so cool and madden's terrible so mm -hmm. anytime you can give me a good like sports football game i'm in so let's go we'll bring umass to the championship Woo! Yeah, this looks a lot better than Madden. Uh, the gameplay is faster than Madden um, because it's it's college. I don't know. It's faster. You can do quicker moves and stuff. And they they have new elements in it. Like there's a passing meter, like where you have to like hold the A button or whatever the X button for so long and like hit it right in the center so that you get a more accurate dot pass and stuff. It's cool. Um, Hodge, yeah. any thoughts? Well, see, that's the that's the thing is I. This is game. I'm. So, I was so excited when they announced they were bringing back NCAA because, as I said when we were with Cog, is the NCAA games. I always loved them more than Madden. And mm -hmm. always, even though I'm a bigger NFL fan, I see I'm wearing a Bears hat. I'm a bigger NFL fan than I'm a college fan, mostly because I don't have a really a college team that I'm that obsessed with. I like Minnesota and Iowa because uh, I almost went to Iowa and my brother went to Minnesota, so I even like Iowa State, which is funny because they're rivals, but. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really have a huge attachment to college football as its own, but the and the, like if you were talking about how they're bringing in like all this just 
specific things to each college. I remember as someone who likes the Hawkeyes, they're bringing in the wave where they wave to the mm-hmm. kids at the, yeah. at the hospital. Like their the attention to detail is so good that I hope that it doesn't get lost in the gameplay because as we said, Madden has sucked for years at this mm-hmm. point. And so if it's just Madden, but with a college skin outside of all that awesome detail, I know, I know. I'm just saying if that's what it was, it would suck. So I'm kind of at the point where I am excited for this, but I need to see reviews before I actually, like, I'm not going to pre-order it. My older brother, who's a diehard college football game, he will watch, or a fan, he will watch every single game. It could be two division one double a teams facing off and he's going to watch the game because he's just that obsessed with college football or sports in general um but so like i i really want to play this game i want to love it but i i am skeptical because of how bad madden has been in the last few years that i need to see reviews first but i i do love the attention to detail that they're bringing to this game and i really do hope it's awesome uh, that's just kind of where I'm at with it, where I, I'm excited for it, but I need them to prove it before I can jump in on it because I can't buy it purely because of the title, because I know that could bite me in the ass if they, if they do end up fucking it up. But I just, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's what it's going to happen, but I also just realized it's called college football 25, not NCAA football 25. Um, that's right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I'm excited for it. It's just they have to prove it before I can be like all in on it. Like I can't pre-order it. I don't trust them enough to pre-order it. But that's fine. I do hope this game is fucking awesome because it does look awesome. So, yeah, that's fine. That's smart. You should always you should always be very hesitant about Mm -hmm. pre-ordering. Especially Um, for EA. (laughs) Yeah, but I will say from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've what I know, I I think your fears will be. you know, set aside because this is not, this is not a Madden clone. Um, they've done, they've already done the gameplay deep dive. Um, they've already had content creators come out and play like four to six hours of the gameplay. And then those people shared all their thoughts and everyone has said like, this is, it's a first, it's a completely different development team. It's not the Madden team. Um, Mm -hmm. and they've built it from, they've built it from the ground up. Um, a lot of actually the Madden people are saying, we want what they're doing in college to come over to Madden. Cause there's a lot of new stuff. Like there's a wear and tear system. Um, there is, uh, like I said, the precision passing it's faster pace when you juke and spin, it's more arcadey kind of. Um, and then of course it's the presentation and the pageantry is just way better than Madden. Um, when you have that, like I said, the bands, the cheerleaders, the fans, uh, going crazy they have the stadium pulse thing going on like when you're playing in like a very hostile stadium like iowa iowa is one of the harder places to play uh, in their stadium um they have the stadium pulse going and like it literally rocks the screen when you're the away team um and sometimes it makes it hard to call audibles um and like when you pull up the thing to see like your uh play art like because if you're when you're when you're the away team sometimes it'll take away the icon like if it's the B for this one, it'll be a question mark instead. Like it makes it a little bit more difficult on you. Like I think it's going to be awesome and I just cannot wait. But but you are wise to wait and see because you never know. Even though everything yeah. looks great, there's always a chance that it could yeah. be a dud. It's, so And it's, yeah, it's not even like if it had come out last year and been. excited, but be quiet, I'm recording. <laughs> If it had come out last year and had been good, and obviously I would have, you know, I'd see with that. But the fact that it's been 10 years of them just fucking up Madden, it's like it, hearing that's a different team, that actually makes me excited. I didn't know that. But uh, mm-hmm. yes, it's just really with it being the first one in a decade, it's like they just going to they're going to have to prove that I'm excited for it. It's because it's like I used to love Chell. I used to play Chell every year, especially when NHL. The Black- yeah, yeah. And for those who don't know, yeah, Chell is NHL. Uh, back, Especially back when the Hawks were fucking amazing and they were always on the cover because the Blackhawks were just that good of a team. Uh, that I I, I, always, I used to love it. And then the, that game went to shit also. And I haven't played an NHL game since 2013, maybe 2014. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's I, I want to get back into sports games because I loved them, but they just haven't given me a reason to like them anymore. So I really do hope that college football is one that's like, oh, yeah. By the way, you're going to love these annual games again. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm excited, but they're going to, like I said, they're going to have to prove it to me. 
Right on. Yeah. All right. So I think we said enough there. Uh, college football 25 is going to be amazing and I cannot wait. <laughs> and all of these games, we just gave you 15 games that we're excited about and all of them sound and look amazing. So we look forward to those. But I think that has been it for us. Let's go ahead and get our final thoughts and get up out of here, guys. Um, so, Sean, let's go ahead and pass it to you. Go ahead and give us your final thoughts and say goodbye to everybody. This has been episode 11. Video games rule. Way too much to play. No one should be bored. It's 2024. That's true. Dang right. Dang right. Haj, final thoughts, sir, for episode I, 11. Sean is right there. There's way too many games. It's kind of the thing of I was reading that people struggle to find stuff to watch on Netflix, not because there's nothing to watch, but because there's too much to watch. And that's because sometimes how I feel with games. It's like, what do I want to play? It's like, I have so many games in my backlog. I don't know what I want to play, so I'm going to play another Fortnite round. And so having these five games come out and... Honestly, most of these of these games, even on your guys' list, there's a lot of games I want to try. So hopefully I can get to the majority of them this year. And we have a good ass second half of this year coming. We thought it was going to slow down after 2023. We were wrong. So I'm excited for the, the rest of this year. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. All right on. And uh, my final thoughts are just thank you guys out there. Listeners, if you're still listening here, you are the best. If you're on YouTube, please drop a like. Please leave us a comment. It really helps us move up that algorithm and maybe get YouTube to recommend our podcast to new people. My cat's super excited for these games. He wants some food. We're going to go ahead and get up out of here, guys. This has been episode 11 of Games Over Plastic, the best podcast that's on this YouTube channel right here. All right. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Have a great day. Be well. Bye, everyone. Love you. Bye, guys.